It is March, which means Houdini is having his annual Mardini challenge. And I wanted to go over my entry for day one, which is based on the spiral node. So I'll make this project file available on Patreon if you want to grab it on there. The whole point of the Mardini challenge is to have a daily node, which is the prompt basically. And it's a challenge to create a piece of art every day throughout the month of March. And you have to use the node that side effects sets up for each individual day. So day one was the spiral node. So let's go ahead and take a look at my entry. You can see in our viewport here, we don't have anything showing up and that is just because of the materials. So let's dive into this SOP create here and we can take a look. So this is the entire network. I've done some experimentation stuff. So everything, like I said, is built around, you know, working kind of quickly. So I uh, did a lot of stuff that I tried and ended up not actually using in the final render, but I just didn't want to waste the time of going through and deleting it all. So I left it in the actual project and it just saves a little bit of time. So it's a little bit messy, but we'll go through what we actually did here. So if you take a look at our, what we start off with, we have a circle and actually we'll start with the spiral because we, the actual node itself was the spiral node. So by default, since we're working in Solaris, it's going to display any curves as a ribbon. So the way that we can get rid of that is just to add a width attribute, just set the default value to zero and that just makes it so you can only see the the spiral or the the curve and you don't have to look at that extra ribbon thing same with uh points and p scale you just set it to zero you just see your your points so you can always change that later so i start off with a circle this is going to be our emitter we're scattering some points onto that and then bringing that into a pop net here so in our pop net I'm just emitting on all points and let's go ahead and disable this for now and take a look at the pop curve force. So this is what's driving, what's taking in that, that curve and we are pulling our points along this curve. So I've played around with a few different things, follow scale, the section scale, orbit, uh, the max influence radius, that is this outer red ring. So that just makes sure that the points don't kind of come outside of this and just kind of fly off into space. And then I've messed around with the shaping as well. So I just made it uh, just a little bit bigger in the middle. It's not super important, but uh, it's one thing I did when I was testing. So left it in there. But the pop wind adds a lot of character to this this suction force along this curve because this kind of looks a little bland and a little, you know, not interesting. So take a look here. We have just our points being moved around. You can see that it looks a little bit more interesting, a lot more detail in the actual flowing of the particles. So pretty simple stuff there. All I've done with this attribute randomize is just randomize the P scale from 0.3 to 0.6. These two nodes I ended up not actually using. I was deleting some normals, playing around with some things. I was making a, a max age attribute to try and drive this point vop, but I ended up not, not doing that anyways. So all this point vop is doing is taking in our age into a fit, and I set the source max to nine with this, so it's gonna be in seconds. And that allows me to control the, the ramp of the P scale, so basically control the P scale attribute. So with this, um, we have our ramp being plugged into a multiply, so we're multiplying our parameter by the randomized P scale that we have. So I wanted to maintain the random P scale, but I wanted to have control over the actual size of them at different points in the simulation. So I take a ramp and then I set a bunch of points in here, set them to a B spline, so it's nice and smooth. And then what this does with our copy to points here, you can see it makes the points start out really small. And then they, about the middle of the simulation, they get really big. And then towards the end, they kind of fade off and, and go back to being really, really tiny to where you can't even see them. So that's all I did for this other section too here. I just copied the same thing over. All the transform is doing is moving it over so that it aligns 
kind of going into the head instead of coming from the head. And then over here, I'm taking so a box and then this is going to create the points that are kind of floating around the actual head. So I use the points from volume, just uh, up the point separation and the, the jitter scale here. I'm blasting away some of the top points because they were interfering with the lighting and I didn't like that, so I was getting rid of those. And then again, randomizing the P scale and then the normals. This just gives us a random normal direction so that when we copy the points, they are kind of oriented all random directions instead of just up and down like that. And then again, we're randomizing the P scale here, or sorry, not the P scale, but the color. And we get uh, a nice grayscale color. That's all I was looking for with that. So then we merge those back together with our other particle simulation. We create a name attribute so that we can organize and shade these later on in the Solaris context. And then for the head, I'm just a test geometry head. I'm doing a poly extrude to give us some thickness here. That way in the actual shader, it looks, it looks correct because it's kind of like a, a glass shader almost. So use a match size to set it on the ground plane. I'm blasting away the inside of the mouth here because it looked really stupid because it's got this like, you know, like the inside of a mouth would look, I guess. Uh, but it looked really stupid with the shader, so I didn't like that, so I got rid of it. And then again, just naming that for shading later. And then this part is the environment. So I started off with a box set it on the ground plane, blast away some of the walls. I didn't have a whole lot of time for the environment. I messed around a lot of, a lot with the shader and the simulations and stuff. So I ran out of time to create a, a nice environment, but this is good enough for what I was going for. So just to add some UVs to our, our box here, and then also add a group for this back wall specifically because I want to come in here and shade this out with a different uh, texture. So create a group for that and then we'll use that later. And then we create the pillars with this UV unwrap. We merge those back together after we remove them around. And then we have a pillars group as well so that we can uh, use that later on as well for, for shading purposes. And then we just create a name attribute for the building and we are all set. So then we can jump into the materials here. These three materials are from the Grayscale Gorilla Library. This was not used uh, at the end, it was just um, temporary. And then this box is what I use to actually shade the, the particles or the, the cubes that are floating around. I started off trying some stuff over here, ended up abandoning that. Same with everything here and this color correct. I abandoned that. Ended up going with this basically three nodes. So bringing in our, our color. So on the build context or like the SOP create context level, it is going to be called CD. When you bring it into USD, it's called display color. So it's automatically changed by Houdini. And then I'm plugging that display color into a ramp and I'm getting a ramp parameter and I set it to these colors. I experimented with some purples, didn't like that. So ended up settling with these colors. And then I plug that into the base color as well as the transmission color. And I set the transmission up to one with a depth of 0.1. And that gives us a nice kind of see-through-ish type material, kind of like a, a data kind of flowing type look. So I like that. And that's what I ended up with for the box. For the head, I ended up not using this shader, but I copied over our box shader and then just tweaked it slightly. So I didn't have a display color set up on our geometry and it wasn't randomizing anything, so it didn't really matter. So I just piped a constant into the ramp instead. And then in here, I changed the depth to 0 0.02 instead of whatever it was, I think it was 0.1, uh, because I like that look a little bit better. That was the final uh, look that I settled on. And I think, Oh, no, I didn't end up changing. I don't think I changed anything else except for the, the emission. So I added a little bit of emission to this, and that just gives us um, just a little bit of glow. It adds just a tiny little bit. It's nothing too special, but uh, we combine that with a light inside the head, which 
we can take a look at here in just a moment. I'm going to disable the material linker here just so we can see our stuff. So I've got three lights on the outside that are lighting our head. They're all pointing in different spots on the head. And then our last light is actually inside the head. If I you can see it here, if I turn this on and off, you can see that we have that light inside the head. And that just gives us a little bit of a glow inside the head that I can then use in the cop network to create a nice little glow. I'm going to go over that in a separate video because I want to just kind of cover that cops and compositing in cops it was new to me and it was something cool uh, that I'd never done before. So I created a way to uh, create a glow that I thought you know, worked pretty well. So I want to share that just in a, in a separate video that way in case anybody's doing any sort of compositing in cops or wants to start with it. That's something that they, they know how to do. So we'll go over that in another video here, but that kind of covers my entry. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Like I said, this project file will be available on Patreon. Unfortunately, at this point, it did not um, win or place top three in the for the day, but it is what it is. It was a fun experience and I, I had a lot of fun. So if you guys want to join in on the Mardini um, competition, I guess, um, go ahead and head over to side effects website, check out the rules and everything and start creating some stuff. Cause it is a fun little, um, uh, thing to do every year. So definitely do that. If you're interested in it, it gives you a nice deadline. Um, it's a nice little experience and there's a lot of people that create some really cool things. And also there's some really awesome prizes and stuff that you can win as well. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. Like I said, this project file is available on Patreon if you want to grab it and I will go over the compositing with the cop net here in another video so thanks for watching check out mardini if you want to participate and have a good day